as she said, I was in charge of documenting what happened or what occurred throughout this process. So I did that in three different ways. One was through videotaping people's responses. Another was through blogging. We had people blog. Um, some people blogged a lot. Some people blogged a little. Um, Ashley was one of our better bloggers. Mm -hmm. She's one of the good ones. I um, mean, the other way was through an actual old school journal where they had to write down their ideas and talk about some of their concerns. Um, these are some of the responses that we had. We had people talk about um, what encouraged them to join our group or what made them want to participate in it. Another one was we asked them to discuss their fears going into the project. And this was very interesting when we asked them the question of what are your fears? Um, the one thing that I can remember is people who were going to an African-American church, they were concerned about the way people dress or how they should dress. Was it more dressy? Should I wear a hat? <laughs> should I wear gloves? Um, and, and so that was a major concern, but I think the participants were overall very, I don't think they had any concerns once they actually made the swap. We had one participant who said she had to change her style of dress because her skirts were considered too short at one of the churches. And the lady, the mothers of the church actually helped her out. Like they would give her a scarf to cover up her legs. Do y'all remember hearing about that particular yeah, participant? Yeah. That was the only thing that stood out uh, about dress. Um, the other concern was just being rejected or having people, or not having people welcome them into the church. And I don't think we had anyone who actually had issues or problems with that once they made the swap. Um, another question we had, participants indicate what happened within them throughout the swap or during the swap. Um, that was one of the questions that we asked them. And most people said it was a very positive experience. Um, it helped them to look at people in another way or look at races in another way that they hadn't really thought about before. So that was a very good, a very positive outcome of the study. I hope to find some friendships. Um, that's, that's a big thing for me. Um, and also, um, I, I always love to, to find um, just partners in, in the church. Like I was talking to somebody today um, about, hey, where we were going to go to lunch. And, and I was like, well, I've got to go do something later this evening uh, with church. And they're like, church? And I was like, well, yeah, our church is out there. Like, we well, have had a lot of church out there. Um, so um, I, I think just sort of that really, um, I've done a lot of work at, even in my young age with interdenominational work, and that's something that's like, I, I'm really certain that that's where the church really, even though we're almost in an age where denomination sort of is sliding away from us, I think there's a, something important in interdenominationalism mm -hmm. that needs to be preserved I and mean, understood. And, um, and I think sometimes that's why we slide into maybe an ecumenical viewpoint. It's because we want to get rid of these race and other things that divide us. So we slide into an ecumenical stance, but maybe we forget the, the true doctrinal um, differences that we might hold, which are valid and clear. Um, but I think that's something that um, is very um, present um, that I'd like to um, be able to get a very good understanding on that, the delineation between them in the end. I was a prize, and um, it, it, it really tells a story. And I've heard all my life about civil rights and the mm -hmm. movement and everything. But the details of what you speak mm -hmm. in regards to just their lives and the images. Right. I'm right. surprised there's such images and videotapes and mayors just saying some things of like, yeah. like, whoa, oh, you yeah. can be on TV saying that and you're okay being yeah. recorded saying that as a mayor of a city and, and governors and it yeah. just really, yeah, so. Um. Well, and one of the things that was so interesting about it too was our age differences, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, because we're really, I mean, except for maybe 10 mm -hmm. and but I mean, well, yeah, and we're the two old and I. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, mean, yeah. yeah. I, I say that only as a descriptor, not as right. a discriminator. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, yeah, Ramona and Rosalind and I all graduated the same year from high school, which was '79. So we're all a little bit too young to, rem you know, certainly to remember that actually happening. Mm -hmm. You know, but old enough that we can remember segregated <coughs> schools and things like that. You know. And then Lily, who was the youngest one, I mean, it was like, what planet are these people from? I mean, she was just like, yeah, what in the world? She was like, I don't believe this ever happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 and so it was just interesting to see the, you know, difference in perception generationally, too. Mm -hmm. I thought it was really interesting. Hmm. Uh, I'm a member of 
this church in Ramona's Sunday school class. I've uh, been a Methodist all my life, been active all my life. I've uh, been about everything you can have in a small church. You can imagine the hats you wear. And plus, many times, multiple hats and, uh, and various degrees of leadership. Uh, of course, I knew about this sometime because of being around Ramona. And uh, so uh, I decided to uh, give it a try to, to uh, help her out. I mean, she, was, she's, she has looked into this and she's come up with some thoughts about it. And uh, I want to see uh, the Methodist church is different than most churches. We're united, Methodist churches. The, we don't pick our preacher. The district superintendent sends our preacher. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we have a district meeting, all the Methodist churches, which are 70 some odd in our district alone, and that's going to change. But they're 70 some odd, so we always get together at times. So I'm seeing people from other Methodist churches, so I'm anxious to go to Brax and to get to meet other people so that I recognize them and know them uh, when I see them at these meetings. Uh, and I, 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 I mean, I cherish the experience of uh, something different. <coughs> Uh, I want to be a step out uh, and honored to be a part of this. And uh, I'm looking for a great, great, great venture over the next eight or nine weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm excited and I'm not having any fears. I'm Rosalind Anderson. Uh, I'm a member of Carver Park Baptist Church. Um, I've been there for like. 20 plus years. Um, I was definitely pulled into it from my friend Ramona. Best friend. <laughs> Best friend Ramona. And, um, pulled into Carver Park? Or <laughs> no, <laughs> the church. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, she's a uh, dead Methodist. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and, um, I'm really looking forward to it, even more so now after the, um, Civil Rights Tour, we really had a good time. It was really just, it just will impact me for the rest of my life. Um, I'm just glad to be a part of it and hope to just benefit from just the, um, just to do something different and to do something that I've never done before. I've never been a part of a predominantly uh, white congregation. And, you know, I just really hadn't given it much thought. I just, the churches where the blacks usually find like a safe haven, that's probably what it's been known for, and just a, you know, place where you always fit in and to do something different. Well, it has to be have its benefits or something I can gain from it.